Hi, welcome to Japan by Food. I'm your host, Shizuka Anderson. Today I am in Odawara City, which is a really culturally and historically significant city in Japan. So today I'm going to be joining an original by food tour that you guys can join as well, by the way, where I'm going to be exploring and kind of slipping back in time to see what it was like to be a samurai or a princess back in those historic Japanese days. And I'm even going to be having a little bit of dinner with some geishas, and I've never done that before, so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go explore Odawara City and all of its wonderful history and food. Let's go! Alright, I'm here now right next to Odawara Station in this beautiful terrace called Kinjiro Hiroba. And they developed it in the year 2020, so really recently, in order to bring back some traditional atmosphere to Odawara, which is such a traditional area. And Coincidentally, I'm going to be meeting my tour guide here, and I think I see him over there. Let's go meet him. Are you Jeffrey? I am. Nice Hello. to meet you. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Kochira koso. Welcome to Odawara. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. My name is Jeff. I've been here for about 15 years here in Odawara. So it's a pleasure to be able to share Odawara with you. Thank Not just you. Odawara and the castle, but some of the culinary treasures of the area. Ooh, I'd love to find out what those are. Well, the first one we're going to be trying is something called umeboshi. Oh. Yes. <gasps> umeboshi. I think one of those famous things you either will love it or you will hate it. <laughs> Whether you love it or hate it or not, it's probably one of the quintessential kind of Japanese traditional kind of foods. I think it's like a pickled dried plum, right? Right, right, yeah. A pickled plum. Very popular kind of in Old Water. We one of the most largest producing areas in the Kanto area. Oh, really? I didn't know that. And what are these ones? Are these kind of like the, the sour, more sour ones? Why don't we try it? Okay. You tell me. <laughs> Let's All right. Give it a try. <laughs> Let's see how it tastes. Okay. Oh my god, it's really sour. <laughs> oh, no, it's even more sour than I was expecting. And, uh, me and too. I, and I've had them before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, eyes are almost watering. If you like sour foods, like if you like biting into a lemon, you might really like this. It's almost akin to biting into a really acidic citrus fruit. Um, but there is a little aftertaste of sweetness. Oh yeah, this aftertaste is kind of what the umeboshi is known for. Mm -hmm. So lots of candies in Japan as well are umeboshi yes. flavored. And it's kind of this aftertaste that we're left with now. Yes, that. it is really good <laughs> though. I like sour food, yeah. so I'm fine with it. Is this really strong? <laughs> Whoa, it's a great way to wake you up in the morning. <laughs> That was a fun way to start things off. <laughs> yeah, so a big welcome to all the water. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm curious to know, mm -hmm. who are these people here? Like, he looks familiar. And, and he should, because this is Ninomiya Kinjiro. <gasps> Almost every single elementary school in Japan, there's a statue of Ninomiya Kinjiro as a boy. Really? As a young boy, he had some economic hardships. He would go to the forest to collect firewood for himself to sell. Well, why he would be doing that? He'd be reading books. A very studious little boy. He grew up to help other people kind of change agricultural systems and economic systems for feudal Japan. Okay. And he embodied many of the kind of spirits and qualities Japanese people really hold, hold in esteem. And he's from Odawara! Just like Umeboshi. Amazing! Yes. So he's a really famous historical figure and all students look up to him as yeah. being the emblem of studiousness. Correct. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's great! Yeah. All right, well, I think I'm ready to try something else that Odawara is famous for. Excellent. Well, Odawara is most famous for something called kamaboko. Ooh! Yeah, kind of a fish paste made from white fish. Mm -hmm. We're located right on the Pacific Ocean, so lots of fresh fish, wonderful stuff to eat. Amazing. We're going to try kind of a spin on that called satsuma age, deep fried kamaboko surimi paste. Ooh. So this is kagose. That looks really good. So kamaboko is usually like a steamed fish cake, Usually, right? Right, right. And I've actually tried making it here really? before. Really? Yeah. But this is not that. Um, but I guess they've done a different version where they use the ground up fish paste and then they deep fry it. And yeah, rather than steam it, we're deep frying it here is basically it. I might just go with... You know what? I'll try the mint eye mayo because okay. you recommended it. <laughs> then I'm going to go with the cheese. Excellent. Okay. All right. Awesome. Let's do it. Here we are. It's 
piping hot. They just tried it. Right. I almost feel like I wish I'd gotten the cheese, but I'm <laughs> sure this is really good. So just, yeah, a new take on kind of a local specialty. Okay. Kamaboko, new flavors, new ways to cook it. It's really hot, but it's not too hot. I'm glad. It doesn't like burn your mouth. And a lot of people at first get kind of turned off by this fish paste idea. Mm -hmm. But during this kind of processing, what process. do you do? Process. <laughs> is it take salt and uh, they use mountain kind of fresh spring water to kind of wash away the fish oils. Ooh. So you're not left with any of that fish taste. True. It's but not you have, too fishy. You kind of have that texture, the protein, mm -hmm. and then shaped it in the balls. It makes a wonderful product. Really good. The mentaiko pod row, you can actually see the individual eggs in it, which I actually don't always see. So you can actually see the little dots of it mixed in with the mayo to balance out the little spicy kick. It's very tasty. Great combo. So my cheese, what they do is they mix in bits of cheese with the sudimi paste. Mm -hmm. You're guaranteed kind of a cheesy, rich bite every time. This is a really good snack. But that's not it. There's more of the Odoara culinary culture I'd love to share with you. Ooh. Yep. So our next stop, we'll have something a bit more sweeter. <gasps> Sounds good. Excellent. All right, All let's, right go. let's go. So there is one last Odoara specialty I'd Ooh. love to have you try out. Ooh, what could it be? So this is uiro. <gasps> I love uiro. Really? Yes. They're sweet little rice cakes, right? They are. And this specific shop has a history that dates back over 650 years here. So the uiro product here has close connections with the castle. It was the Hojo family at the castle that actually called the uiro family here from Kyoto to help them kind of develop medicines and they eventually develop sweets that you're probably familiar with. Yes. So I'd love to have you try some, get a bit of kind of culinary connection with the past here. That sounds amazing. Ta-da! Oh, these are so cute. They're actually made in the shape of a chrysanthemum. Tell me what you think. It's a traditional, long history, local food. So sounds good. Enjoy. Why don't we eat it together? Absolutely, Let's all right. Let's do it, because there's lots for, for both all right. of us. I'll go with the green one. Okay. Okay. And I think I'm gonna have to try the pretty white chrysanthemum. Mmm! Mmm! There's white bean paste inside of mine. Mine has red bean paste? Mmm! It's chewy and it, it, it's got this kind of tender sweet. Yeah, it's really delicate. I feel like the mochi is not overly chewy or sticky. It's just you can kind of bite through it really easily. It's soft and kind of pillowy. Delicate, subtle. A lot of Japanese sweets certainly aren't overwhelming in Definitely. terms of sweetness. This is a wonderful example of that, I think. Nice. Yeah. This is a great choice. Good, good. This is kind of our last stop on kind of our culinary taste tour of Odawara. Okay. And if okay with you, we'll head out to Odawara Castle to learn more about the samurai. Ooh, I would love to learn more about samurai. All Oops. right, let's walk on over there. So now that we have had that wonderful bite to eat, you had a taste of kind of the, the flavors of Odawara. Mm -hmm. I would love to take the time to kind of introduce Odawara Castle to you. And this is actually the original entrance. Oh, really? So you can imagine yourself being a samurai. If you would have came up here, you would have been on horseback. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's why if you notice the doors are quite large, because you would be able to enter while you're on horseback as well. So this one particular entrance is called Uma Dashimon, which means kind of getting off your horse gates. OK. <laughs> so. Aptly named. Right, correct, correct. <laughs> And now that we've passed through the gates, we've gotten to Odawara Castle. Mm -hmm. We're learning more about the Sengoku period, this time in Japan, of samurai, ninja, and more. Mm -hmm. It's time to change and get into full gear. Ooh. A bit of time travel. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All right, here we go. OK. Three, two, one. Thank you. You look wonderful too. Look at you. You're the feudal princess <laughs> Thank in you. modern times now. It feels great. I do feel like a real princess and I've never dressed up like a Japanese princess well, before. What better place to do it Ed, other than, you know, we're at Odawara Castle, samurai princess. Hopefully it takes us back in time. How do you feel? It's amazing. And honestly, as you mentioned, like I think this is the place to get changed. And yeah. a very fun experience in this tour. Yeah. Shall we go take a walk around and just 
bathe in this wonderful traditional atmosphere? Absolutely, let's take it all in. We're, we're in deep now, so let's explore some more. Let's go for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> The Hojo clan ruled here from Odawara Castle for about a hundred years. Oh wow. Yeah, until 1590, which was the siege of Odawara. So some of the biggest names in samurai history, like Toyotomi Hideyoshi from Osaka Castle, mm -hmm. Tokugawa Ieyasu, they were here at the siege of Odawara. And a lot of people historically consider this the beginning of the end of the age of the samurai. Really? Yeah. So all of those really significant historical events, they kind of happen right here where we're standing. All those historical figures were here at some point, yeah. Wow. And it's interesting note, this castle was actually given to Tokugawa Ieyasu. Ooh. And he kind of deferred it and gave it to one of his generals. And he decided to start his own, his own city, his own castle in a small little fishing village up north called Edo. Oh, that little village? That little village. You probably know what that became, right? <laughs> yes, uh, modern day Tokyo. That's right, that's right. Wow, so very humble started. beginnings. This is some fascinating history. I feel really kind of honored to be able to experience it sort of as if I belong to that time. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> it certainly is, and there's lots of like historical foundations and places that really tie in a big significant events here in Japanese history. Mm -hmm. And it all kind of ties into the city of Odawara, and the food's also connected to it. They all okay. have close connections with the, the castle town itself. So really interesting kind of city to explore, I think, for you. Definitely. I yeah. think there's a little something for everybody to learn about this city. Yeah. So next, I would love to take you inside Odawara Castle. Ooh. Show you a bit of real samurai armor and the swords. OK. So uh, let's have a change. All right. And then head in the castle. How about that? All right. So we have to go back to reality for a second. Right, right, right. Okay. Unfortunately, but <laughs> yes, we do. All right. Let's do our, right. our magical switch back then. Are you ready? I am. Three. Two, one, and we're back into our regular clothes. All right, we're back to reality, but we get to go to Odawara Castle next. Awesome, let's go inside. Shall we? So we're inside of the castle now, but it looks a lot like a museum. Yeah, it very much is. It's a museum <laughs> kind of dedicated to kind of the siege of Odawara with yeah. lots of artifacts and yes. items that uh, connect us back in time, That's including so samurai cool. armor and Katana swords. <gasps> Katanas! Look yeah. at that. Are these real katanas? These are real. These are considered the soul of the samurai. Mm -hmm. Katana swords, yes. Wow. Very different from any other swords around the world. These craftsmen fold it over dozens of times, which creates thousands and thousands of layers. Really? And some of the beauty you can see these collectors have are on the sharp side, and you can see kind of the wavy lines. Those are kind of considered kind of the beauty of the sword. That side is hard, the back side is flat, but very flexible. Wow. And wow, this is what you were just wearing outside. <laughs> but this is a real piece of historical armor here. Very, a bit different from what I had on. If you look at it in the detail and the craftsmanship involved, the lacquer work, the metal work, the stitching is absolutely incredible in these things. It's stunning. Now I've got a wonderful view to show you from the top of the castle. Really? Okay, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, what a view! Yes, we're at the top of Odawara Castle with the Pacific Ocean and the mountains of Hakone behind us. Wow! And over here, oh, the breeze is even more over here. It feels so nice. During the siege of Odawara on top of this hill, they built a castle. Really? And it was that building of the castle, there's a bit of psychological warfare that kind of convinced the people of this castle to give up after three months. So they built the castle and then they built it behind a big layer of trees. Okay. And then just overnight, during the evening, they cut down all the trees behind the castle. So if you were looking here from Odawara Castle, you would have thought a castle had just popped out of nowhere overnight. No way! Yes. Yeah. That is a really interesting tactic. Thank you so much for today. I had so much fun exploring Odawara with you, slipping back into time. I'm glad to hear that. I had a great time too, so. Yeah, this is amazing. And I get to go have an amazing dinner experience I hear after this. I hope so. You will definitely enjoy it. The geisha and the, the kaiseki ryori. Oh, I've never done that before. So this is going to be a very fun new experience. And it'll fit perfectly into this historical time slip.
I am here now for an early dinner at a restaurant called Oshimizu, which is a kaiseki restaurant which serves traditional Japanese food. And the building has been around for 300 years. It used to be a house, and now it is a restaurant where you can actually dine with real Japanese geishas. And this town was known for its geisha culture, so it has a long history, and there used to be many, many geisha who used to work here. Konnichiwa! Nasaimase, konnichiwa! よろしくお願いします。こんにちは。海底大清水にお越しいただきましてありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。よろしくお願いします。こちら海底大清水は富山県から移築した建物でございます。築は約300年ほど前と言われておりまして、富山県からの移築
めちゃくちゃ美味しいですね。うん、The chef here! Fantastic! I love the fact that it is not soy sauce. The roasted、um, sake dressing is delicious. And the sashimi is nice and soft and sashimi like on the bottom. And the sea grapes give this wonderful like popping texture. Just a lot of fun texture and taste wise. Everything is fantastic. Geisha san ni tsuite no iroiro shiritai in desu kere to mo, do you nagare de geisha san ni natte iku in desu ka? Hakone wa desu ne, 18 sai kara. あの芸者になることができるんです。京都の方と違って舞妓さんっていう子はいないんですけれども、18歳から20代の若い女の子たちのことをキラリコっていう名前で呼んでいます。すごい。じゃあ最初はキラリコさんから始まって、30代からは芸者っていう風に変わるので、なるほど。ちょっと大人にお姉さんになりました。芸者というのは終わりがないので。体が動くうちはいつまでも頑張らせていただきたいと思ってます。なるほど、すごいですね Now that I've done my dinner, it's now time to play some geisha games, traditional geisha games. And I'm just learning how to play this one, which is kind of a rhythm game that'll be with some shamisen music. Traditional geisha game, which is basically an old fashioned version of rock, paper, scissors. And we're going to be using a Japanese screen to hide each other so we cannot see what the other person is going to be doing. And basically, we have different traditional poses for the rock, paper, scissors that we're going to be doing, which is the tiger, the old woman, and the pistol. Incredible experience. This is my first time having a geisha san dinner, and it was a lot of fun. It's just, it feels like an experience you cannot have in the modern day. And I really feel like I slipped back in time and could fully enjoy the history and culture of Odawara. So I'm really glad to experience this today. And if you guys enjoyed it too, you can actually sign up for this original buy food tour in the links down below. So make sure to check that out and really get the full taste of Japanese history. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, comment, share, and definitely subscribe. And we'll see you guys soon in another video. Arigatou gozaimashita! Bye bye!